Howdy everybody, Keith Warren here and you're about to see one of our behind the scene vlogs. All right, I got a uh, little lever gun. This is an air rifle, 25 caliber. It's called the Seneca Sumatra. And uh, I'm gonna take it with us and we're gonna try to shoot some little stuff with it. But right now, I'm just checking to see that it's on. And we'll, if it's on, we're gonna wind up taking and using it to shoot maybe a mongoose or a rock rabbit or something like that. Perfect, it's on. All right. Yay! You're like me. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Okay. Go! <laughs> All right, John. We moved camps, and uh, the first thing Maddie does, there's no dogs around here, so Maddie's going to make a friend with somebody, and she's made a friend with a little uh, seven-year-old girl by the name of Wendy. And look at him playing. I mean, that's the cool thing about Maddie. She just, uh, it's just like, it, she just jumps right in wherever she is, so I think that's pretty cool. So tonight we have... Uh, changed to a different ranch. We went about two and a half hours away to uh, a town named Fort Buford and our Buford. And uh, anyway, this is called Rockland. Uh, and so you can take a look around the room, Kudu and uh, Wildebeest and Red Heart of Beast and Warthog. And I'm celebrating because tonight I wound up took my small caliber air rifle and that is the Seneca Sumatra. And I shot my first a monkey with it and it pulverized him. We're gonna pull some footage and put it right here right now uh, I mean it just did an unbelievable job. So anyway, Maddie's out trying to spot and stalk for a warthog on this ranch and Tomorrow we're gonna go out and take the 50 cal and we're gonna see if uh, We get a kudu with the 50 BMG. So anyway, life is good mm -mm -mm. Life is good yeah, okay, we're, tell everybody what's going on. We are fixing to have dinner, um, and it smells amazing, and I'm getting impatient. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got a 50 BMG. We're fixing to shoot it and uh, see how it does. We've got plans for this thing to. I got plans to, to, to shoot a baboon with it, see what happens. And uh, we got plans for Johnny to shoot it, maybe at a kudu if we can get a chance at a kudu. So. Get your ears on. All right, what we're doing now, we got a, a nice shooting rest that we're gonna put this 50 BMG in, just like that. And we're fixing to make sure it's zeroed in. And the reason for going against this post like this, to stop the wobble, like this. <laughs> and I'm not gonna shoot it, he is. Oh yeah, take the punishment. Tell everybody what you're doing. Taking cover. <laughs> Why? Because we're fixing to shoot a big man gun. There I gotta go. cover my ears. I don't have hearing protection. <laughs> okay. What? Got a bullet? Oh, nope, not yet. I'm better, it, it, it shoots better with a bullet, Johnny. <laughs> okay, show the bullet. That's pretty big. It's big. All right, there's your one. Johan is the, the savior around here. Johan does everything, gets everything for you. And you will not be standing there when he shoots. No. <laughs> I promise you. Okay. You're taller than me, I guess, because it's a little high. Ha <laughs> ha. There's one person in the world I'm taller than. It's taller than Johnny. <laughs> okay, good. Gives you a little bit of a beating. Let's go check it out. Okay, I was shooting the pellet gun at this target a little while ago, and those are the pellet holes, and there's a 50 BMG hook. Now we're gonna go to 100. You scared, Johnny? No. Look at the dirt down there. 
Look at the dirt. Wow. Ride the bull, big boy. Ride the bull. Huh? Two inches low, but it's uh, it's on. I mean, okay, but good. It's two inches low. We're gonna go ahead and make an adjustment. Then. Okay. Big country, and uh, today we're hunting for kudu. Johnny's on deck. <clears throat> so we took a break for brunch. Got a little basket brunch that Lucy made us. And Maddie already ate, and she's been exercising, and now she's taking a break. And then we got Johnny and Simon overlooking this great big valley. So. Kind of a pretty place to have brunch, don't you think? All right, so earlier in the vlog, we showed you Johnny shooting a 50 BMG. There's Maddie. Look at those oranges back there. Sunkiss would be proud. And there's Johnny right there. It's Johnny, okay, show him what you got, buddy All boy. Right, come on over. It took us two whole days of straight hunting all the way through to put this kudu bull down and we did it with a 50 bmg that's one of the things that made it so hard it was lugging the 35 pound gun around uh the, the hills um the other problem was that the gray ghost is very hard to get on look what the hole did it is huge look what the bullet did massive hole got and it, it went through it was quartered away when we shot him and went through all the vitals and it actually came out the neck so it was an ethical shot put him right down um it's been an awesome time. We've had so much fun. We've been up, up mountains, down mountains, uh, cruising around with the trackers, looking for kudu. Um, they are so tough to hunt that it's incredible. So it made it that much worth it in the end, um, that much more worth it in the end. We, uh, we really had a great time. And uh, when we finally got them down, we were all so overjoyed because it's been a tough two days, I'll tell you that much. They don't call them the Great Ghost of Africa for nothing because they're just disappearing. So now that Johnny has told you how he, uh how he shot the kudu and how it went down ethically. I want you to take a look at the ground. <laughs> That's what I like to call nature's gravy. Okay. What do you think, Johnny? Big kudu bull. <laughs> I just can't get over the amount of blood on the ground is what I can't get over. Come on. Okay, let's roll. What'd you just do, Johnny? I just thanked our tracker who led us on some of the best hunting I've ever been on after kudu across the Rocky Mountains of Africa and uh, it is pretty cool. What do you think Simon? I think it's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> so earlier today, earlier today I want to tell you what happened. We uh, we had an opportunity but uh, Johnny Johnny actually missed the shot and it was a, it was a long shot, it was a tough shot and he missed it. And I know he was down, but he redeemed himself. And I, when we were driving over here, I said, that's the reason why when you make a kill shot, it tastes so sweet. How's it taste, Johnny? Fantastic. It's good. Watching the sun go down behind the mountain here in South Africa, and life is good. All right, so look who's in my bed. What do we have here, Maddie? Buster. <laughs> Busta? Busta? Busta, what are you doing? Whose bed is that in? Yours. Whose bed? That's your bed. That's right. And he's scratching his fleas. <laughs> yep, he knows where he's welcome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Where do you get your love of dogs from? Mm. Look at him. At least he's not too excited, thank God. <laughs> Busta, what are you doing, buddy? Okay. Tell everybody hi. Say hi. All right, um, I don't know if any of you have ever been scoped before, but my dad just got scoped, and it was by a 50 BMG. So 
he took down a great animal and uh, he's got the scars to prove it. I'm gonna show you real quick. All right, uh, I wanna show you something. I got bit, bit by my gun, okay? How's that look like? A Citadel scope right there. Yeah, it looks like the end of that Citadel scope right there in my forehead. Anyway, I'm uh, trying to stop the bleeding now. We got a hell of an animal up here. I got, look at, look at the blood on me. I mean, I, all, on my jacket, inside my binoculars. Um, anyway, that's taking one for the high road, don't you think? Wait till you see what we got knocked down up there, though. Okay, so what do we have on the ground? You can see right here, Maddie got me patched up. And uh, anyway, I'm gonna, gonna show you. First off, we've got a whole bunch of trackers up there. And uh, got Maddie, she's got a camera. And then here we got Johnny, he's got a camera. And then let me show you what we got on the ground. And I'm gonna show you the bullet hole and his horns. Clearly, most people in Texas like long necks, but that's a long neck of a different kind. Look at this guy. I mean, uh, good shot placement. I got Graham with me. Say hi, Graham. Okay, good. Graham is the PH, and we got a great big bull giraffe down. And we got a bunch of help to get him out of here. So that's pretty doggone cool. Got any questions or comments? Post them below. I know probably the biggest question is, what, what do they taste like? What do you think I'm going to say? Chicken. No, they don't. They taste like in between raccoon and possum. Except stringer. All right, well, we're packing this up. The guys are getting this thing uh, all cleaned up, and they're going to take it back. And Next stop for us is the lodge, and next stop for this giraffe will be Conroe Taxidermy. So, uh, this is one of the coolest things about this property, in my opinion. Uh, this is a Bushman cave that... Uh, centuries ago i mean there's no telling how long ago the african bushman came up here and overlooked this gigantic valley that you can see probably 30 miles to the mountains on the far side and they uh got pictographs in the in the rock here and many of them are fading away but you can actually see and, and the more you look at them the more you start spotting there's one there's one you have to imagine how old are they and how tough those people must have been to to stay up here. I mean, this it is cold right now, really cold. And you got to think those people didn't have uh, boots and they didn't have uh, uh, cold weather gear, but they sure as hell had grit. And I think, look at this, and it's uh, it's pretty cool just to be up here. It makes you kind of feel like, uh, I mean, that hunters. I mean, think about it. If it wasn't for hunters, I mean, there's uh, you know, the animals wouldn't be here. But clearly, they honored the hunt by uh, putting these paintings on the walls and for us to be able to enjoy it and kind of a sacred spot, don't you think? What do you think, guys? It's pretty incredible. Awesome. Yeah, like... Seriously. Like, you feel it in here. Howdy, everybody. It is our last day here at Hunter's Hill Safaris. Right now, we are up bright and early. We need to leave here for the airport in about 30 minutes, and we're going to settle up with everyone, and I am soaking up this fire because this has been one of my favorite parts of the trip. Like, it's freezing outside. It's the middle of it's July now, but it's winter right now, and it's really cold when you're out hunting. There's a lot of wind, and it's just nice to come into a warm fire. And uh, this beautiful place is uh, hard to leave. I'll put it that way. You get homesick when, I mean, I'm homesick. You homesick, Maddie? Yeah, I miss my cows a whole lot. <laughs> okay, Maddie misses her cows. I miss everything else. Uh, but anyway, uh, we're heading home with a lot of good memories, and uh, hopefully we won't have any snags on the way there. We're going to try to stop off at a store, aren't we? Yes, I'm really excited for that. This is the only type of shopping I think I like. Yeah, we're going to get to a store, and they've got all kinds of Afrikan uh, merchandise in there, supposedly for tourists like us, so... Anyway, and I still got my my little deal right here. Okay, it's sticking on good. What are you yawning about, little girl? I'm tired. I would have sleep on that airplane. Mm. We got like 22 hours of flights, and that doesn't include layovers. Yeah. So when when Maddie and uh, Colton were growing up, every night at supper we'd sit down as a family and uh, tell them what we would what the couple of topics we'd say. We'd say they'd ask my parents would what's the best part of your day and we'd tell them and then they'd say well what's the worst part of your day so after every trip 
we do the exact same thing. What's the best part of the trip? That is impossible yeah. for us to say. But uh, what's the worst part? That's easy to say. Definitely the travel. Yeah, the travel's going to really be bad. So anyway, fixing to do that right now.